Morning guys, hope you're good. Um, I wanted to jump on today and just talk quickly about optimizing content across platforms. Now there's TikTok, Reels, uh, Shorts, uh, YouTube videos, uh, Instagram posts, Instagram video, um, and I think TikTok have now introduced recently uh, up to three minute videos. So everything is going towards video content. And the reason that is because our attention spans are getting less and less and less. And with video content, you can tap into that attention span um, and it, it tends to keep people active on platforms for longer. That's my take on, on what they're, they're doing with, with platforms. And I, I think relatively it's good. When you come onto YouTube, you expect longer form content, which is why you can get away with eight to 10 minute videos. Do I think that's gonna change? Not necessarily, that's why they're introducing shorts to run alongside uh, this longer format content. Um, you know, people like Logan Paul have uh, uploaded four to five minute videos very regularly, and I, I don't think this one's gonna be very long. Um, and it, it is a viable way of, of putting out content because it's very choppy and quick. And if you've watched, what if you've watched? <laughs> if you've watched any of those Logan Paul videos, then you'll see how fast paced they are because they've been chopped with that in mind, that eight second retention span in mind. And that's why a lot of um, content that does well on YouTube is very bam, 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 very quick, fast paced, very attention spanny. Bam. Now, that being said, if you are just predominantly photo and you don't want to get into video, you can just use your photos. There's a lot of things on TikTok and Instagram, a lot of reels um, that are, are, are going well, where people have just uh, put up their photos to a ni nice catchy song, and it's like bam, 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 and it's doing very well. Now, I wanted to jump on here because I've had a couple of questions over the last couple of days. People just asking me whether or not they should do video, whether or not you know they're anxious about doing video, should they bother, do clients want video and photo? And I think as a whole, yes. Uh, if you can offer to a client both photo and video content, then they're gonna be happier with that rather than just saying, no, I just do video, I don't touch photo or vice versa. So I'm gonna be releasing a video over the next week where I'm gonna talk about the basic settings in video and how you can go ahead and shoot video if you're just getting started. It is quite daunting, but once you understand the concept of video, it'll also help you understand photography a little bit better as well. I just wanted to jump on today and just talk a little bit about that because I spent a lot of time editing and chopping up old content to recycle that content to make more content. Okay, I've got a screen record on. We're gonna to go to the most recent and we're going to scroll down on the most recent. Um, and I'm gonna go through them. Uh, I want this to be the, the, the biggest part of the video where I'm gonna showcase you guys. Uh, this one here, I'm gonna give some feedback as well. Uh, sometimes, you know, I don't give enough feedback. People have asked for more feedback, so I'm gonna give you some feedback. So for this one, um, I wanna give a little bit of constructive feedback, and I'm gonna do that throughout the uh, the hashtag. This one, what I would have done is I would have load the uh, the contrast, so this I feel like it's a little bit too contrasty. Some of the blacks are a little bit too black, and I would have tried to highlight that reflection um, that you can see down here. Um, but overall, I like the vibrant colors and, and the, the whole aesthetic of the, the photo, but I probably would have decreased the contrast to make it, you know, a little bit more softer across the whole way. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yes. Um, this one here, I love the framing. Um, I would have made the outer edges of the circle a little bit darker to draw that focus into the subject, which is the, the, the foot in the middle. Um, but that's what I would have done for that. This one here, we've got uh, a sprite and then a glass, which is giving a bit of contact, because I'm assuming it's, it's sprite that's in the glass and you've dropped some ice in it. I probably would have got on level with the glass, so I would have had the glass at like the level of the camera, and then having maybe the sprite in the background bokeh it out, and then you'd have the splash taking up like most of the frame. So you'd have the, the glass, then the sprite, and then the camera would be essentially where my face is, right? So it's like a layered shot, does that make sense? Um, this one's another one from the same dude, gonna skip past the ones that are from the same people. This one here uh, for Fabio, uh, nice panning shot. Uh, nothing wrong with a panning shot in, uh, in general. Um, with panning stuff, sometimes you get it in focus, sometimes you don't. I'm guilty of that. Does it matter? No. Overall, I like it. Maybe I would have darkened the road a little bit to give that separation between the road and the background, but that's about it. Um, keep going past this dude. Okay, this one here is a detailed shot 
of the top of this flower. Is it a flower? Yeah, it is. Uh, which is really nice, um, but it's it's focused a little bit on the stalk rather than the, the actual like petal. I maybe would have tried to focus on one of the petals um, because obviously the colour of the petal would have popped a little bit more. And maybe I would have cropped the image in slightly to probably like like that maybe. So it's taking up more of the frame. Um, but that's, that's, that's just my opinion. Again, great photo, love the colour grade, very cinematic. This car photo here, nice car. Um, I would have, again, so what I tried to do is I tried to create separation in the photos that I'm putting out. So this one here, I would have tried to create a bigger separation from the ground and the side. So create the layers. So in this, you've got, I mean, I don't know what I'm trying to show you. You can see the screen. In this, there's three layers for me. You've got the foreground, which is the, the road. Then you've got the building and then you've got the sky. So that's three objects I would try to make different exposures to give that layered effect and that dynamic effect of the photo. And then I would have probably left the, the, the cars quite exposed well anyway, um, but I maybe would have, um, I maybe would have added a little bit more exposure to it, just tiny, um, with like a radial filter um, to make it like stand out a bit. But it's a great shot. Uh, this one here, uh, great photo, very, uh, very moody, very dramatic, um, but you've lost a lot of detail in the shadows. So here, I would have probably not allowed it to be so dark and I probably would have decreased that contrast and you know made sure the shadows came out a little bit more um, because you don't want to, making moody photos is one thing, but you don't want to lose, um, you don't want to lose detail in the shadows. You want there to be context. But overall, it's a great shot and very moody. What are you doing? I mean, the cat is just roaming. This here is... My cat just went into the room and shut the door. What are you doing? Apparently it doesn't like me talking. <laughs> this one here, there's a, there's a subject down the end. What I would have done is maybe had the subject in the middle, right in the middle of the bridge, which would have framed the person nicely and it would have looked really sick, but if it's a randomer, then obviously you can't be like, hey you, come here, stand there. Well, I guess you could, but still. Uh, this one here, love the vibe. The vibe is great. I don't actually have any anything to say about these at all. Framing's lovely on that second one. The lighting is really nice. You've got that kind of like uh, cyberpunky yellow going on, which is nice. And in that second frame, you've got, it's very misty. Are you using a mist filter potentially? I don't know, but it's very misty and very, very hazy. I really like that. And um, this one here, um, so a big, a big tip here. So straight away, you can see there's like this halo around the subject. So can you see here, um, where I'm zooming in, there's a, you've got the, it goes dark to white and you've got this like um, aura coming away from the subject which you need to try and avoid. So what you can do in Lightroom is you can use the erase tool. So say if you brush over the subject and make them lighter, you can then go back into the brush tool, the brush tool that you've just used and use the erase one and just clear up some of that. And that's, you know, that's gonna help out with that. Um, this is crazy, what is this? That's a great frame, honestly. Really great frame. There's a little bit of detail lost in the, in the uh, shadows down below. But as a whole, it's a great frame and I've never seen that frame before. So hats off to you, because I really like that. Um, it's great going for your photos. And if you want me to give more constructive criticism um, going forward, then I'm, I'm happy to and I will. Um, but I just wanted to jump on and give it a little bit of a... Well, I hope that was helpful. I've jumped on just to give a little bit of insight about my workflow. And then also um, I wanted to have a little bit of a a little bit of a sit down and go through some of your photos. So with all that being said, create more, stress less, and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Um, and yeah, I'm going out tonight for a shoot, so I'm quite excited to share some of that. Um, and some exciting stuff coming with, uh, with Oscar, hopefully, um, over on his channel. So if you haven't subscribed to Oscar, you'll link him below.